you need should be in your bulletin. I invite you to please rise as you are able for our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who creates, redeems, and sustains us in our creation. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Faithful God, have mercy on us. We confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We turn from your loving grace and go on our ways. We pass judgment on one another before examining ourselves. We place our own needs before those of our neighbors. We keep your gift of salvation to ourselves. Make us humble. Cast away our transgressions and turn us again to life in you through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God hears the cries of all who call out in me, and through his death and resurrection, Christ has made us his own. Hear the truth that God proclaims. Your sins are forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Read by the Holy Spirit, living freedom and newness to do God's work in the world. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Also with you. Enemies of the gospel 
and bestow on the church your saving peace through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. First reading is from Jeremiah. The days are surely coming, says the Lord. I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. You will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. A covenant that they broke, though I was their cousin. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them. I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, No, the Lord. For they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sins no more. The word of the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth be moved, and though the ground is shaken in the depths of the sea. Though its waters rage and fall, and though the mountains tremble with its calm, there is a river of streams that glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of the city, it shall not be shaken. God shall help it at the break of day. The nations rage and begin to shake. God speaks. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. Amen. The God of the Lord is the Lord. What does the Lord have to do with the Lord? Behold, one who makes war to cease in all the world, who breaks the bow and shatters the spear and burns the shields with fire. Be still there. I will be exalted in all the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our strong. Good morning. 
But I believe that I have truly learned the most from the time that I tried something and it was less than successful. Especially those times that I learned that trying was worth the risk. It was worth it to take a chance. Hockey great Wayne at Gretzky once said, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Say that again. You miss 100% of the shots that you don't take. If we are afraid to fail, we freeze, we stop, we get stuck in our fear. We avoid risk, settle for the same old, same old. We stop dreaming of what could be. We fail to dream the big dreams. We become like prisoners with no hope for the future. This year has brought tremendous challenges to all of us. It's forced us out of our comfort zones, forced us to think how we are in relationship with each other without being face to face or in touching distance. It's forced us to reimagine a family meeting or worship service on Facebook or YouTube or Zoom. It's forced us to find new and safe ways to serve the community, which is in great need right now. It's forced us to rethink and reimagine what it means to be God's people in 2020. But we've done it, brothers and sisters, and we continue to step up to the challenge. We got through the dark days this spring when businesses and our beloved sanctuary were closed. We celebrated Holy Week and Easter gathered around our computer screens. How did we have the courage and the strength to do such difficult things? Well, I for one did them knowing that I had the support of this wonderful community behind me. And I knew that changing how we gathered and worshipped was the only way to keep family and our loved ones safe and healthy. I knew that longing to be inside our building wouldn't help. It would just hold us back. And so we moved forward, learning new technology and adapting to changes, taking risks, and having a mixture of failures and successes along the way. The secret to our success was knowing that it wasn't about any one of us individually. It was about all of us together. It was about making sure we kept up our relationship with God and with our neighbors, first and foremost. It was reminding ourselves of the real truth in our lives and not getting stuck into false narratives that would distract or mislead us. Today, three of our young men will affirm their baptism. They'll repeat the words spoken for them by their sponsors at their baptism. They'll renounce the devil and evil. They will say yes, that they love God unconditionally. That they love God and their neighbors, even those who are not like them, and those with whom they might disagree. You know, those that are kind of hard to love sometimes. They will say yes, they'll seek justice for all, and walk humbly with God that they'll look forward to life as a confirmed Christian and participating in the ministries here at St. Peter's. They'll say, yes, they believe in Jesus Christ and are willing to take a risk for the gospel. Every Reformation Sunday, we hear in our gospel that we're freed, but freed to do what and why. Jesus reminds us that we're freed to take risks to reach out to the stranger, the one in need, the other. Free to see how God needs us to do ministry here in Huntington Station, working with our sister churches in the community. That we're free to stand up for justice, to seek rights, to work for the good of all. We're free to renew our baptism just as these young men will do today and every day, because this is what Jesus calls us to do. Not because failure is not an option. We're free because it's not up to us. Fail or succeed doesn't matter in the big picture of salvation. Oh, sure, we'd like to succeed more than we fail, and most of us usually will. But knowing that God loves us, gives us grace and peace, and saves us, no matter how many successes or failures we have, this is what frees us to take chances, to move and grow and reach for the stars. That's the big picture. That's the freedom to live as a disciple of Christ 
And that, my friend, is the good news for this Reformation Sunday 2020. Amen. Dear friends, we give thanks for the gift of baptism and for these people, one with us in the body of Christ, who are making public affirmation of their baptism. And I invite the parents and sponsors to present their son for affirmation. Let us pray. Merciful God, we thank you for these brothers whom you have made your own by water and the word in baptism. 
You've called them to yourself. Enlighten them with the gifts of your spirit and nourish them in the community of faith. Uphold your servants in the gifts and promises of baptism and unite the hearts of all with whom you have brought to new birth. We ask this in the name of Christ. Parents and sponsors, the church thanks you for your ministry of encouragement and example of faith. You have now fulfilled promises made at the time of your child's baptism. You have helped lead them to this day, to this opportunity to publicly speak words of faith that you first spoke for them, to seek the renewed blessing of baptism now by their own choice. I ask you to profess your faith in Jesus Christ, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? If so, answer, I renounce them. Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? Do you renounce the way that sin, the ways of sin that draw you from God? And now I invite the assembly to stand. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to church the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? The resurrection of the Father and the life of the Lord. You have made public profession of your faith. Do you intend to continue in the covenant God made with you in holy baptism? To live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, to serve all people following the example of Jesus and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. If so, I ask you one at a time to repeat, I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. People of God, the assembly, do you promise to support these brothers and pray for them in their life in Christ? Okay. Let me now stand in place at the altar. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give us new birth, cleanse us from sin, and raise us to eternal life. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in turn the gift of your Holy Spirit, confirm his faith, guide his life, empower him in his serving. Give him patience in suffering and bring him to everlasting life. Amen. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Logan the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm his faith. Guide his life. Empower him in his serving. Give him patience and suffering and bring him to everlasting life. Amen.
Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Colton the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm his faith, guide his life, empower him in his serving, give him patience in suffering, and bring him to everlasting life. Amen. We'll now uh, read the scripture that they have chosen for their confirmation. Kieran, Christopher, David, cast all your anxiety on God because God cares for you. 1 Peter 5 7. Logan, Richard, Glidden, love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. 1 Corinthians 13, 7. Colton David Craig. Believe on the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. Acts 13, Acts 16, verse 31. Now I'm ready to stand and take the assembly. Let us rejoice with these brothers in Christ. We rejoice with you in the life of baptism. Together we will give thanks and praise to God and proclaim the good news to all the world. And let us welcome them with our family. And while we have the hymn uh, for the Oh, yes. With confidence in God's grace and mercy, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Renew and inspire the church in the freedom of the gospel, O oh God. Where the church is in error, reform it. Where the church speaks your truth, strengthen it. Where the church is divided, unify it. Ignite in us the working of the Holy Spirit. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. As the earth changes, as mountains shake and the waters roar, may we care for this planet as a holy habitation for all living things. Sustain all people and lands recovering from natural disasters of any kind. Lord, in your mercy, God. hear our prayer. Guide areas of the world divided or traumatized by conflict, especially in our own land. Free all from slavery and human trafficking, and 
protect the wall in harm's way. Lord, in your mercy, hear us. Release those living in bondage to death, chronic pain, or addiction. Grant healing touch to those who are ill, especially Bob, Erna, Wally, Karen, William, Stephen, Bruce, John, Christina, Steve, Teresa, Elsie, Evelyn, Katie, Philip, Mary, Charlie, Jackie, Phoebe, Jimmy, Eleanor, Kim, John, Mary, Alexander, Mike, Karen, Mary Ann, and Kathy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In this family of faith, we give thanks for courageous voices that have remained firm in their commitment to the one who frees us from sin and death. Especially our new confidants, Karen, Colton, and Logan. Centered in your grace, unify us in the hope of the gospel. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Even in death, you free us and give us a place in your house. We give thanks for our ancestors who have shown us truth and freedom, especially Martin Luther and those who work for the renewal of the church. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Listen as we call on you, O God, and enfold in your loving arms all for whom we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share God's peace. Stewardship thought for this week is stewardship is the way we use all the resources God has entrusted to our care, our time, our talents, and treasures, so we can love God and our neighbor. Please rise as you're able. <coughs> Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. You have set before us these gifts of your good creation. Prepare us for your heavenly banquet. Nourish us with this rich food and drink. And send us forth to set tables in the midst of a suffering world. Through the bread of life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. <coughs> If you have bread that you brought from home, please take it out. If you would like a wafer, please come forward to the tray and take a wafer.
utterly mighty and merciful Lord, heaven and earth, for all of your glory. In great love, you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Then after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory now and forever. Gathered into one, let us pray. Father, and Lord, and Lord. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come to the banquet table where Christ gives himself as food and drink. Let us pray. We give you thanks, gracious God, that you have once again fed us with food beyond compare, the body and blood of Christ. Lead us from this place, nourished and forgiven, into your beloved vineyard, to wipe away the tears of all who hunger and thirst, guided by the example of the same Jesus Christ, and led by the Holy Spirit now and forever. May be seated for the announcements. And welcome and thank you for joining us today. Uh, I ask the confirmation uh, students and their families to just hang back for a minute and we'll get a couple of pictures taken. Um, a reminder that next week is All Saints Sunday, where we'll read the list of all beloved saints that have left, left us. Uh, please email or call the office uh, before Wednesday if you would like to get uh, one of your beloved saints onto the list. We have several opportunities this fall to to help feed the hungry. <laughs> As usual, we have our Thanksgiving basket drive. There are flyers outside if you can participate, um, either with a monetary donation or with some donations of food. There's information flyers outside. Please take those. We also are in a challenge 
if we can collect 500 items in your cans or boxes or jars of food items by next Sunday, uh, the ELCA matching program for Bread for the World will give $500 to Helping Hands Rescue in addition to the 500 items that we collect. So we're trying to put a push on getting some items. Uh, you can bring them next Sunday or you can drop them off in the church office Monday through Thursday in the morning. There will be someone here to receive them if you want to drop them off then. Um, uh, a reminder that our worship service will be online later this afternoon, so especially for any of your family or friends that weren't able to join you today for the confirmation, they'll be able to watch it on YouTube and on our um, Facebook page. Our coffee hour is virtual these days on Zoom. The information is here if you want to join us. Our Bible study is also on Zoom Wednesday afternoons at 1 o'clock. Please join us for that. Yoga class has started. So Monday evenings at 6.30, the information is here. Please join Deacon Doreen as she leads you through some guided meditations and stretches and yoga poses. Um, okay. We have some masks left. Uh, these were donated to the Long Island Council of Churches. If you need some masks, that's like the one I was wearing, uh, please take a pack if you need them to um, get through these uh, fine days. Are there any other announcements? Okay, please rise. Go out into the world in peace. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. And love your neighbor as yourself. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Feel free to join in our closing hymn. The hand motions are here. We're carrying instruments. We are a caring Lutheran congregation in Huntington, sharing God's love and serving the community. Go in peace, remember the poor.